Houston, Texas, a city known for its magnificent machines, rockets that transported man into space and eventually to the moon. Just a couple of miles from Johnson Space Center, Houston plays host to another incredible collection of vehicles. And while they may not be as big and powerful as a NASA rocket, they ooze an elegance and beauty that plays on the senses in much the same way. Whether it be a rocket, a car, or a boat, each one is in fact a magnificent machine. Welcome to the first installment of Magnificent Machines. I'm Dave Dobson, and we are at the annual Heels and Wheels Concord Elegance in Houston, Texas. Incredible automobiles here, including this, NASA's MRV, and it's built to pioneer some of the technologies NASA's gonna be using in their Mars rover and their lunar rover. And it is magnificent to the nth degree. Independent motors on each wheel can steer us in any direction. Now let's take a look at our next Magnificent Machine. It was built for the Riddler show in Detroit Auto Show. And so that's where it was first shown. And it became uh, one of the grade eight Riddler winners. It started out as a 1950 Chevrolet Bel Air two-door hardtop, Mercedes headlights, Dodge Neon, roof, windshield, and the rest of the car is just uh, modified, stretched, and, uh, and built as you see it. The striping is all uh, hand painted and it has the shadowing on the on the orange bleeding over into the uh, or the red shadowing and the orange. I bought it because uh, my wife collects Hot Wheels and I was in uh, Tennessee buying a Ferrari and the dealer had this one and I forgot about the Ferrari and concentrated on this one and bought it uh, because I thought it looked like a Hot Wheels car. Most Hot Wheels are a one-of-a-kind design, and here at Keels and Wheels, we found a pair of hand-built custom roadsters created by Houston native Jim Simpson. His cars have an emphasis on style and open-air motoring, just like this convertible. My late husband bought this car. He was uh, 19 years old when he purchased it, so that's how it all started. And then after, it sat in the garage a long time, and then he wanted it restored. And then when it was about 70% finished, he passed away instantly, my husband, and I continued to finish it. It was a frame off restoration, a rotisserie on the body. You couldn't even imagine the car when you, if you saw it. It was, it was basically broken half when it came in the shop. We've been all over, it's been an experience, and people have been very supportive. We had veterans who had a car like this, who had to give it up to go into the Army. So usually when I see those people, they have grandchildren, we open up the doors, go sit in it, talk about it, and uh, reminisce all you want. I look today and I look around, I look up at the sky and I said to myself, you know, I'm carrying on. He would have loved this because he loved people. Of course, this event is called Heels and Wheels, which means both boats and cars in the Concours. Here's one entrant that's taking it to heart. It's a 1962 Porsche 356 with a beautiful handmade canoe on top. But right next door, we have another Porsche of note. It was made in 1955 and only about 50 were ever made of this trim. It was called a Continental. Why were there only 50? Well, you can bet the folks over at Lincoln had a little something to say about that trim. This is a 1956 Continental Mark II. The cars were hand built. They only made 2,500 in 1956. They made another 557. At the time, the car was selling for $10,000. Only the rich and the famous could afford this car. I saw one of these brand new in 1956 on the, on a Lincoln dealer's floor. And I was 17 at the time. But when I saw the price tag on it, $10,000, and I was making $130 a month in the Air Force, I said, I'll never own one of these. 
fast forward and uh, it cost me a hell of a lot more than $10,000 this time around. <laughs> We've got more Lincoln connections for you. In the 1970s, the DiTomaso Pantera, a Ford-powered supercar, was sold through Lincoln Mercury dealers. This one was once owned by Elvis Presley. While the Pantera was a beauty, it was a beast to keep running. Elvis was finally so fed up with his car that he took out his pistol and he shot it, just like he did with his television sets. Stay with us for more automotive tales and trivia when Topcoat's Magnificent Machines returns. Topcoat's Magnificent Machines is brought to you by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by Topcoat, don't just coat it, Topcoat it. Welcome back to Topcoat's Magnificent Machines at the Keels and Wheels Concours d'Elegance. The Corvette has been an automotive icon for well over 60 years, and it's well represented here today at the Corvette Corral. We came across one of the originals. There are hundreds of cars here on the grounds, and believe it or not, John Hodges owns nine of them. Most of these cars are, of course, immaculate, but this one's maybe not the best looker in the field, but it might be the most remarkable. John, tell me about this Corvette. Sure, be glad to, Dave. Uh, this is a 1953 uh, Chevrolet Corvette. Uh, they made a couple hundred of them, and it is a true survivor. It's also the winner of the Bloomington Gold um, Survivor Award. And as far as I know, it's the only one left. So we try to keep it uh, just like you're seeing it here today, and you're right, it's, it's, it's no gleam and glamour beaming off of it, but uh, it is a great car. How many miles are on it? You know, it shows 68,000. That could be 168, 268. I, I would assume it's probably uh, 168,000, if I was guessing. And how much have you driven this Corvette? You know, Dave, I'm not sure if people were just smaller back in 1953. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't drive this car much because it is hard for me to get in. Events like Keels and Wheels can be counted on to roll out the rarities from all eras, including an offering from a London-based racing car manufacturer that dabbled in building a civilized sports car. Sidney Howard made mostly race cars, made a very few street cars. When he decided to make a street car, he didn't want to go to the trouble of creating a whole new frame suspension, so he just rolled out a race car chassis and engine and dropped the street car body on it. But I do know that it went immediately to Rhodesia in Africa, stayed there for, oh, 20, 30 years, somehow managed to get its way back to England where I found and purchased it. As I started stripping the car down, I knew the car had a wood subframe, but I didn't know that every piece of wood in the entire car was rotten. Totally a mess. I had to find a gentleman in Tennessee who was a fantastic woodworker, just sent him a chassis with all the wood in place, and two years later he sent me back a chassis with all brand new wood. It's not a sports car. All my other cars are sports cars. This is a big luxury car. It doesn't handle as good, but it's a fun car. It's a nice car. It was satisfying to really take the ugly duckling and make a swan out of it. Well, it's not always the car itself, but it is the history, and boy, does this car have a history. This is a 1961 Rolls-Royce Phantom 5, and in 1961, the city of Houston bought it to show for Queen Elizabeth around town. A few years later, this car made its way into the hands of comedian Red Skelton. So he's a pretty funny guy, pretty serious car. And it's one of four Rolls-Royces on display here at Keels and Wheels. This car was, was made in Springfield, Massachusetts. A lot of people don't know that Rolls-Royce made cars in the United States. The car was made in 1926, and if you look up the serial number, it says 1926, but the car didn't sell until 1927. But it was sold originally to a, a movie director in California. Movie director was Joseph von Sternberg. Joseph von Sternberg worked for Paramount Studios in the 1920s. So Paramount sent Joseph von Sternberg to Germany at the end of his contract over there, he brought Marlene Dietrich back to Hollywood. And I'm sure she sat in the passenger seat of this car as he sat there driving it. I was going to a party one night and I drove this car and I heard this voice from the next car and I looked over there, two women in the next car and the one closest to me said, what's her name? And I said, well, I don't know. I haven't named her yet. I said, I just got her. She said, how about Red? 
And I said, well, how about Scarlett? So she and I, uh, somebody I never met, have decided her name is Scarlett. <laughs> Bentley is one of the featured marks at this year's Concours. They made their first car 100 years ago. In the 1930s, they produced one vehicle that was described as the silent sports car. And here today is an example that was a rescue and restoration project. The, the coachwork uh, became um, decayed over a number of years, probably from sitting out. But the fundamental, the chassis and the engine, the gearbox, the brakes, you know, everything was remaining just the same as it, as, as it was originally. And I'm a big believer in having, if I have an antique car, I use it. There's no point in having a, a museum piece, you know, it may be looking good, but does it work? Yes, mine work and I use them. The controls on this uh, Bentley were deliberately placed on the right-hand side. Growing up in England, if you were left-handed, that was something that was considered second, you know, something wrong with you. What kind of looks do you get when you're driving this down the road? Generally, is what kind of car is that? And I lean out the window and say, well, it's a, you know, a Bentley. It's a proper motor car. And they, they smile and off they go. As we head to break, check out this 1910 Bianchi limousine. This was the epitome of opulence over a century ago. It was rescued from a Swiss junkyard back in 1952, and it's been lovingly preserved and restored ever since. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Top Coat's Magnificent Machines. If you want some Bavarian eye candy, Keels and Wheels can provide. Check out this classy and classic model 328 race car from the 1930s or the quirky BMW 600 micro car with its innovative front opening combination door and dashboard, or the extremely rare 1600 GT with its stylish for the time two door design and advanced suspension and an engine that was canted over 30 degrees to maintain a low profile. Knowing both the specifics of a car and its idiosyncrasies are part of the job requirements for a Concorde judge. So we tagged along to see how one judging team performed their duties. This is more of a, what they call a French style of judging, where it's really the elegance of the car. So what you're looking at is just the way it boom and strikes you and hits you. And... Notice if you were to hit something, the bell crank would push the spring. Yeah. yeah. That's a fun of judging. You get to see some of these things yeah. that you didn't know. It. You, you didn't never know. know. Yeah. You never know about them. Pebble Beach is like the major concourse in the world. I'd say probably Amelia Island follows closely behind it. Now, you don't see the million dollar cars here as you do at <laughs> Pebble Beach, but it's uh, still a wonderful show. Pierce Arrow was the Rolls Royce of America. They built a fabulous car. They started out, uh, George N. Pierce Company built bird cages and they built ice boxes. And they were the finest bird cages and the finest ice boxes in the country. Pierce built three models in 1913. They built, I think, about 266s. They built maybe six or 700 of the 48s and a few more than that of the 38s. This is the only 48 horsepower runabout left in 1913. I saw this car advertised in Hemmings Motor News in 1983, and I didn't have the money for it, so I called my father to see if he would loan me the money, and he said there isn't a car in the world that's worth that. So I lost out on the opportunity, and then 2006, and I paid about five times as much as what it was worth in 1983. <laughs> what a resume for Clive Cussler. Of course, he's a New York Times best-selling author 20 times over. He's a world-renowned undersea explorer. And of course, he's an avid car collector, which is the reason he is the Grand Marshal here this weekend at Keels and Wheels. What is it like to be among fellow car collectors uh, oh, it, like you? It's great fun because we all have something in common, obviously. It's just dependent on the cars we want. All told, Clive Kessler owns over 200 rare classic and exotic cars in his museums in Colorado and Arizona. You did bring one car with you this weekend. Uh, tell us about this, Jim. Uh, this is a 1927 Locomobile, which was one of the pre premier cars of the day. And this was such an unusual body to it because it has six fenders. 
and uh, and it looks like something that the, the, the princess would go to the ball in, you know. The, even the white walls are on both sides, you know, it's in, and the little lamps and everything. It's, key, it's a cute car. So. Clive Cussler is the proud owner of several Packards, but none has an organized crime connection quite like this 1947 Custom Super Clipper. Al Capone ordered two identical cars all the time, which you don't see publicized anywhere. And one of these was on the south side of Chicago, and the other was down in Florida. And uh, he joked about it. He said everything was identical, including the license plates, because the old gang were making the license plates for us. So Capone hated the feel of wool and loved the feel of silk. And so he ordered both these cars from Packard with silk seat covers from the factory. This particular car is the top of the line Packard. It has every option you could get on a car in 1947 that Packard built. One of the questions we get asked a lot is when it comes to collectible cars and, and what are the major benefits of the Top Coat F11 when it comes to that? And, and Mike, you know, you hear it too, just as well as I do. You know, example, cars like this. There's some major, major advantages to using F11 over other products. I mean, tell me. Yeah, because most products out there strip down and tear down surfaces. Right. And with these collector cars, you can't do that because this isn't just a car, it's an investment. Yeah, you don't want to work that paint, you want to build it up. Right, build it up and F11 will coat it and protect it and not just the paint, it will do everything. The glass, the rubber, the chrome, and the, the old way of doing it, the old industry products, they, they're really hard to work with and dangerous in some cases on collect cars. Well, and also a lot of these newer products on the market, you know, that are, you know, we call them the copycats, but at the end of the day, they're not true manufacturers, they're marketing groups, and they're saying they can do everything that, say, an F11 can do, but you know as well as I do, right. we've been around the block. Right, you know? that's very dangerous ground because you have companies out there, they're not even real companies, they're importing products. That's right. That you don't know what's in that thing. Yeah, and, and imagine it, putting that in a car like this. Yeah, you could destroy it. Yeah, we're us, we're talking a year, five years, 10, 18 years testimonials of people on cars literally just like this protecting, you know, maintaining, easier maintenance. Uh, but, you know, these are investment grade quality vehicles. And that's why you want to use a product yeah, like that. You F11. only use the best on investments like that. That's I mean, right. F11 has been tested on multi-million dollar investment in vehicles and collector items. It's the for sure safe way to go. So to learn more, go to topcoat.tv. Riding in a Stutz Bearcat, man, those were different times. If you wanted to go fast 100 years ago, you bought a Stutz Bearcat. Stutz was established in 1911 in Indianapolis and went racing right away in the 500. This 1915 is one of four Stutzes here at Keels and Wheels and just another example of a magnificent machine. We'll have more coming up right after this. Top Coat's Magnificent Machines is brought to you by Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Top Coat, the best coatings in the world. Hello and welcome back to Top Coat's Magnificent Machines. You know, when I was growing up, I was such a car fan and you only had to say one word to spark my imagination and that was Lamborghini. Well, there's about a dozen of them here at Keels and Wheels, including a great example from 1967. It's a 1967 Lamborghini Miura. It's a P400, which is one of the earlier cars that were built. The 53rd car produced. It's, uh, the color is called uh, Mura Verde. It's kind of an interesting pistachio color. Very uh, loud, typical Lamborghini color. Uh, the car was subject of about a 4,000 hour restoration in the early 2000s and um, gone through completely, um, mechanically and also the paint and body. It's a wonderful paint job that's held up really well over time. Uh, it's a joy to drive. It's a typical Italian muscle car, basically. The engine is transverse in the back. It's a mid-engine car and a uh, very innovative design for that time frame. It's, it's uh, felt to be the original supercar. That's what uh, uh, people call the Mura. It's a 170 mile an hour car back in its day. The first car to go that kind of speeds. Very interesting car to drive. It's uh, definitely an eye catcher. In addition to the Miura, Italian cars are well represented at Keels and Wheels, including a cluster of Ferraris, a sleek and powerful 1972 Maserati Ghibli two-door coupe, 
and an Alfa Romeo that was named after the city in which it made its debut. My collection is um, Alphas, and this is a pretty special one in, in that the, the stars kind of aligned. Two of them were shown, invited to come to the Expo in Canada in 1967 in Montreal. And it didn't have a name. They, no one knew what to call it. It didn't. It just it was a prototype of something that might be a representation of what's coming in the future as far as styling, styling and a little on the exotic side and so on. It carries a pretty special engine, and it's a, a detuned Formula One V8. Alpha was racing in the 60s, so it's uh, carrying a close cousin to the Tipo 33, two liter, two and a half liter, three liter engines that were being raced in Formula One. Well, Val says this thing needs more miles, and uh, I'm free in about a half hour. <laughs> okay. Where are the keys? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hiding them at the moment. Just let me know if you need me. Okay, all right. The automobile concourse side of Keels and Wheels wraps up with a parade of honor for the class winners as well as the best in show champions. After the applause came the hardware as over 80 awards were handed out. So that wraps up our coverage of the wheels side of Keels and Wheels. Next week will be the boat concourse contenders here on Top Coats Magnificent Machines. We'll see you then.